brothers and sisters from Kingston, Jamaica, put your hands together and let's welcome the Black Uhuru. Hello, everybody. You're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. Bob Marley and the Whalers is the most successful reggae group of all time. But from a strictly commercial point of view, the second most successful group is none other than the phenomenal Black Uhuru, which was founded in the Waterhouse district of Kingston, Jamaica in 1972. While Trenchtown has dominated headlines as being the most vibrant hub for musical creativity, Black Uhuru almost single-handedly put Waterhouse on the map as an area with shiploads of talent of its own. In the five decades of its existence, the group has blessed our eardrums with classic hit songs that have become like anthems to reggae fans everywhere and were credited as being among the groups responsible for keeping roots reggae alive during the near unstoppable wave of dance hall from the late 1970s into the 1980s. The group emerged at the perfect moment, a time when Jamaica was being ravaged by political and economic turmoil as well as hazardous cultural shifts, but armed with musical messages powered by their Rastafarian faith and driven by their magnificent and powerful sound, they were seen as the saving grace to a new generation and a musical scene that was reeling from the death of Bob Marley. Since the formation of the group more than five decades ago, there have been five different incarnations with Ducky Simpson as the only constant face. While all lineups of the group have been great in different ways, our focus in this video is on Black Uhuru 3.0, the third version that was made up of Derek Ducky Simpson, Sandra Puma Jones, and Michael Rose, which is regarded as the greatest and most successful Black Uhuru lineup in the history of the group. The story of this particular set began in 1976. The original group comprised of Ducky Simpson, Garth Dennis, and Don Carlos had fizzled out. Ducky, in a bid to rebuild a vocal trio, recruited Waterhouse-based singer Errol Nelson and was on the lookout for a third member and lead vocalist. Popular Waterhouse-based producer Prince Jammy introduced Ducky Sims to a 19-year-old powerful vocalist called Michael Rose and the trio came together to record Black Uhuru's debut album in 1977 called Love Crisis for Jammy's record label. Errol Nelson left the group soon after, leaving Simpson and Rose to work as a duo for a while. During this period, they began to work with Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare. Sly and Robbie had been part of Peter Tosh's touring band but were now free and entered into a collaboration with Black Uhuru. In 1978, Ducky was on the lookout for a replacement and got some info from a friend about a great match. It came in the unusual form of a well-educated American lady with a master's degree that had moved to Jamaica a few years before. A friend of Ducky's walking by a house had heard the lady singing and was blown away by her haunting ethereal voice. She had been a dancer and was at the time doing side jobs as a backup singer. So when Ducky approached her, it clicked and the trio was complete and ready to rock. This new combo went back to Sly and Robbie's studio and recorded a slew of awesome singles that included future hits like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Shine Eye Girl and Plastic Smile. Michael Rose's magnificent singing style, masterfully complemented by Puma and Ducky's brilliant harmonies, combined with Sly and Robbie's hard driving and excellent instrumentals, was an unbeatable formula that was getting ready to take Jamaica and the world by storm. By 1979, they had compiled enough material for the group's second album, Showcase, under Sly and Robbie's taxi label. The album lit up the airwaves and started what can only be described as a craze that caught on not only at home but abroad. Their music had caught fire in the US and the New York City radio station WLIB sponsored a Black Uhuru concert at Hunter College that year, an opportunity they grabbed and delivered an amazing show. Before the year was over, they were invited to perform at that year's edition of the annual Reggae Sun Splash. They delivered one of the most sensational performances in the history of the festival. Their chemistry and charisma was off the charts and they provided a spectacle like no other. Michael Rose fiercely prowling all over the stage with his distinctive powerful wailing singing style. Puma piercing the air with her ghostly chanting vocals, capturing all attention with her non-stop flowing dance moves dressed like a true African queen with beautiful traditional outfits and Ducky the boss, always cool and barely moving but delivering his harmonies with devastating effects. Their magnificent performance sent Chris Blackwell, the CEO of Island Records, into a scramble and he quickly got a hold of them and signed them to his label. And in 1980, they released the album Sensimilia which hit the US markets with great success. Their music was hugely popular in the States and solidified their reputation a great deal. Sensimilla was a smash hit and cultural landmark but there was still more to come. Their next album Red 
was released in 1981 and is considered by many music critics and most fans to be their masterpiece, an opinion I strongly agree with. It contained simply untouchable classics like the youth of Eglinton, a menacing warning to the establishment about revolt by the youth as a result of negligence and bad governance that had given rise to many riots in several countries in that era, as well as other classics like the inspirational Spongy Reggae, Carbine, Puff She Puff and Rasta. Red put the ban on the charts in several countries including the UK where it went into the top 20. The Red album has been rated as one of the greatest of the 20th century and Rolling Stones in particular rated it among the 25 best albums of all time across all genres. It also seeped into popular culture like Spongy Reggae which featured in an episode of The Cosby Show and the scene in the movie Not Sure. Black Uhuru's music was taking over at a time that coincided with the sad death of Bob Marley in 1981. The loss of the man who had practically put reggae on the global mark cast a sad shadow over the reggae scene, but Black Uhuru's timely rise lit up the darkness in the immediate post Marley era. When the reggae music scene was in need of a new strong voice, Black Uhuru's finest album, Red, shined with all the musical intensity and political fervor of the Rastafarian movement. In my opinion, Red was the peak, and there's a saying that getting success is hard, but maintaining success is harder. The next album, in 1982's Chill Out, was a good album, but nowhere near the levels of previous albums. It was still great music, but had moved from the traditional reggae sound to a more electronic dub feel, my personal opinion, by the way. The next album, aptly titled Anthem, was released to massive acclaim in 1983, and had amazing songs like the wonderful What Is Life. The album won the first Grammy ever awarded for Best Reggae Album in 1985. The group was literally sitting on top of the world. But behind the scenes, there was plenty of infighting between Michael Rose and Ducky Simpson. Rose had quit the band just before the Grammys were awarded and Black Uhuru were down to two members again. Ducky recruited Junior Reed, another Waterhouse singer with a similar style to Michael Rose as replacement. But just before the group could record the 1987 album, Puma, who had been diagnosed with cancer, quit the band to undergo treatment and she eventually passed on in 1990, leaving behind a husband and six children, as well as grieving colleagues and fans all over the world. So that was the end of Black Uhuru 3.0, the ensemble that blew the group's popularity and success into the stratosphere and made it the legendary band it is today. Ducky has made many lineup changes since then, including a four-year run with the original members from 1972. But whenever anyone hears the name Black Uhuru, the image that first comes to mind is that of Rose, Puma and Ducky. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe and until next time, Jobless.